Go for it. Freaking what up, dude? Um, Strider Wilson, and I'm the host of this podcast that's mine. It's gonna be called History is Night. History is Day. Friggin' what up, dude? Welcome back to another ep of History is Dank, dude. I'm your host, Strider Wilson. We got Aaron going beast mode on the sticks, dude. What's going down, Aaron, dude? What up? Dude, I'm freaking just posted up right now, dude. Look, dude, it's been a while. I think we took a week off. Things have been busy making moves. Look, it's summer, dude. You know, I gotta be bronzing, dude. I gotta be out there in the sun, dude. You know, being in the studio, being in the booth is always pretty sick, but... We're running around. We're getting stuff done, dude, you know? Cruising out. You done anything crazy this summer, dude? You freaking throw any ragers, dude? You go froating, dude? Throw, you know, you, you dipping in the pool, dude? You getting nuts, dude? You know, you, it's what you got to be doing, dude. You got to be getting out there. You got to be freaking dapping it up with the boys. Taking a little road trip. I'm all about it, dude. Dude, going up to a nice little quaint little town with my dank wife. Up to Solvang, dude. A little Dutch-infused town, dude. Used to hate it when I was younger. One of my good boys got married up there at Brooks. One of the dankest weddings I've been to. Great time, dude. And um, him I mean, and his wife. It was weird they made him wear wooden shoes, though. Yeah, dude, yeah, he had to, dude. Exactly. He had to go around in those clogs or whatever the hell. And he's got a big, he's a big-ass dude. 6'6", six, six, dude. Wears a size like 15. Tougher than, yeah, they had to shape him up, dude. Yeah. Friggin' Rumpelstiltskin had to come and make those pups, dude. And... You know, that little town, a little tourist town, kind of a little tourist trap. You're like, why is this even here? Then you go there and you go, I'm being charmed. There's shade. I enjoy shade, dude. Dude, the older I'm getting, I'm going, you know what I like, dude? Shade. I like to, I like to post up on a bench. I like to feel a light breeze. I like to look at someone walking their dog, feel a little jingle of the bell go by, and I go, huh. Pretty nice. <laughs> then that person looks over at me and it's just a dude by himself in cargo shorts, sunglasses and a baseball hat. And they're like, that guy's wearing a wire. What's going on with that guy? <laughs> if he was licking an ice cream cone, I'd probably call the cops. But it's just nice. A little shade, dude. You used to want to rage. That goes to the younger dudes. Rage. Go out, chill. Beach house, legit. Lather up with the boys, blast some blue oyster colt in the parking lot. Go down to the beach, talk to some ladies, text, set up a party for that night. Show up a little bit late to work, make your manager mad. Who's me now? Then I got to look at my watch and go, come on. And they go, dude, I'm sorry. You, you think I wasn't there once, dude? You know, I'm just trying to be the manager who gets it, dude. You know, I don't know if that's possible to exist, though. Is there ever a middle manager who gets it? Probably not. Maybe a little bit. Maybe to a degree. But I still, I, I got to run a smooth shift, dude. You know? And if you're going to be a, you know, not a cog, if you're going to, you're a cog in the machine, but if you're going to be a, what's it, what would be a kink in the cog that is this machine, you're out, dude. So, you know, that's the part about raging, dude. You, you can't just say whatever and party without consequence there's always an externality you know so and i think that's true partying partying knowing there's consequences like when i'm 40 i'm going golf <laughs> i'm doing it i'm gonna do e i'm gonna wear leather i'll probably spend more time with my wife i'm not gonna go golfing with the boys and disappear on every sunday for eight hours i am be in home at home inside away from the sun posting up just doing regular 40 year old stuff like you know Watching golf, like, mm, was a very nice shot by Scheffler. Oh, you know, just watching my goth voice, dude, eating a mochi ice cream from Trader Joe's, and just, mm, I love this mochi, it's so good. And then, you know, ki kiss my wife goodnight, and then go gothing at 2 a.m. till about 6 a.m. Be sick. Well, maybe I'll get a tattoo. Maybe I'll get a Jacob's Ladder on my weenie. Get a couple. Uh, couple. juice. Yeah, what's a Beetlejuice? You got to get Beetlejuice somewhere on you. A, ta a Beetlejuice? Yeah, yeah. I'll probably get it on my lower back, probably Tramp Stamp style. Yeah. 
Dudes aren't rocking lower back tats enough, dude. I'm going to do it. I'm going to freaking front that cause. Get a Beetlejuice, get a Jack Skellington. You know, classic is a butterfly. Maybe a mermaid tail down there. I'm going to get a freaking... I'm going to get a freaking Beetlejuice tat down there, dude. Just his smile. Those weird teeth. <laughs> or maybe when I was born, like, put it like, um, you know, like, stamped, like, 1987 AD. It's when this ass was created, dude. My wife can enjoy that, dude. It's not what you, you know, your wife can do for you. It's what you can do for your wife. You got to be giving lover, dude. You can be a gracious lover. Give and receive, dude. Um, enough of this preamble. I'm just posted up. I'm feeling a mellow vibe. We're recording a little later than usual. So if you're probably saying to yourself as a listener, a regular listener of History is Dank, you're going, dude, Strider chilling right now? Yeah. We're chilling, dude. We're posted up in some AC. Aaron's in the booth, dude, being a beast. I'm over here, dude, freaking just being a beast on the hot mic, chilling, and ready to talk about cave art, dude. Think about that. Think about that shit, dude. I love petroglyphs, dude. Petra's rock, glyph, image. And I remember I was hiking with my dank-ass wife in J Tree during the pandemic. And um, we did one of these hikes early in the morning because it gets hot out there in the desert heat. And J Tree, underrated national park. Good for shrooms, good for star watching. Good for if you want to write an album. Also good for shooting music videos. Sick. You can do all those things. Didn't you propose out there? And good for proposing. Yeah. Aaron. That's what I'm talking about, dude. Coming in with the facts, dude. Let's go. Propose, dude. Pop some bubbly out there on the trail, dude. Sick. Proposed in February. Cold. It's actually very cold. Desert. Huge temperature swings. Look out. Take your zinc. And... I was out in J Tree, and we were on this dank hike. Oh, I'm trying to think of the trail. Barker Trail, I think, was the hike, actually. You kind of go by this old water dam. There was also, like, a famous shootout that took place out there between gangsters in the 40s. They would meet up and do, like, money meets between, you know, some of the casinos out there, the Native American casinos, and then you head back to the city and stuff. It's, like a, it's a real good place to trade hostages. It's, Aaron, I'm so happy you just said that. It's a perfect place mm-hmm. to do a hostage trade. No cops, yeah. You know, Come everything's pl- pretty flat. Um, if anyone's trying to flank you, you'll see the the dust trail rising out well in, in the distance. Maybe you find yourself a little plateau. You get there early, you camp out, do some shrooms, look at the stars, then do a hostage exchange the next day. Great call, Aaron. And this at this particular location, it was a hostage exchange or money exchange that went awry, shoot out people. A few people got ganked. There's still the original car out there. They never even moved it for some reason. Just rotting out there in the desert heat that you can look at. And then you walk and then you come up on some petroglyphs from one of the um, tribes that was located out there thousands of years ago when there was more water, when the climate was different, uh, more more hospitable to humans. And there's some sick-ass cave, cave paintings. It's always tight to see a hand image put up there. You know, be like, dude, I'm present. Aaron, if you were going to do cave art, if you were going to do a, this is, I guess, a petroglyph. We're going to get into the cave art in France in a, in a moment, in the Les Hauts cave. I'm probably saying that really wrong. But if I say French, I go, oh, cave. That's how you pronounce it. How would you, what, what, what type of, would you trace your weenie? Uh... They have that. Dudes have done that. I bet they have. That's happened in caves. Um, could you put your butt on it like you do a, a copier? That's a good call. Like a oh, fax machine. Hey, let me let me dip my ass in some ancient clay, and you know they use some graphite charcoal. We'll get into some other substances. Um, maybe a little bit of the, the sulfur stuff or that yellow. Maybe let me let me dip my ass in that, and then press it up against this this. I think that'd be a good prank. One of like the ancient artists, you know, 30,000 years ago, a homo sapien artist on the cave would, you know, put like a very good, like, oh, here's the bison, dude. And then it, and it's a, it's sort of a narrative uh, story, which is rare in cave art. Sometimes it's just an image or something or a, something from nature or a stick or a plant or a bush. 
or, or a weenie that's been traced. But maybe there's a narrative element, you know, talking about a great hunt or maybe even a battle. They usually wouldn't get that. It'd be more of a hunt. But then you could come up and just put your ass in the middle of it. Classic. Classic. It'd be the best joke. It'd be a joke that would stand the testament of time. They say, hey, there's some jokes that don't age well. This would age perfectly, especially if there was an ancient prankster who did that in the Les Hons caves in France. Because there's sort of a Goldilocks condition going on here of preservation in these caves. That's why we're highlighting this cave system today. It was discovered in 1940 by a group of teenagers who were looking for their lost dog. They're looking for this dog, dude, trying to run away, whatever, dude, chase something, squirrel, whatever. They stumble into this cave. They move a few rocks, whatever, go down there, and they go, holy shit. There's some sick-ass artwork in here. Um, they go and report it to the authorities. Less than a week later, experts are already out there. Because cave painting and, and deep cave painting, and this cave is about... 20 meters wide, five meters. Oh, no, that, that's like um, where one of the most impressive um, um, paintings exists. But it's about, you know, it's about 20 meters deep. So it's pretty deep, 60 feet. You know, it's pretty big. It's freaking deep. 60 feet, NFL season. If you got a receiver running a 30 yard route, snag that puppy along the sideline, you're happy. Half PPR, tack on another point and then a little bit. It's 0.5 points for you. You're happy about that. So in prehistoric terms, it's impressive that these ancient humans, our ancestors, our French ancestors, and of course French, we know they love art. You know, France, they love, they got that loot. The Louvre, you know, freaking posting up, dude, biggest, I believe, I believe biggest art museum in the world. Smithsonian might be larger as just a overall museum. In any case, deep, fairly deep cave here. And also drawings that went up high, about 16 meters, not all the way to the top, but means these guys had to use scaffolding or, or they had to have some dude spotting him with a rope, you know, like a carabiner style, like belay on, belay off, climb up, get up there, lick your finger, you know what I mean? The, the prankster would have to turn his butt around, put it, press his ass up against that. Would have been incredible. It is incredible to think about how they were able to do that. But you know, you don't have TV. Maybe you have good sustenance in this area where the Lachon cave system exists in front. And... You have a little downtime. Also, you can do it at night because guess what? It's fucking dark in there. It doesn't matter. You're posted up. You don't sleep well. You know, insomnia has to exist in some facet at this phase in our ancient DNA. Although I believe, you know, there are modern illnesses that have come up later on. But I've been insomnia. I, I, I remember reading something about how the natural sleep pattern before the Industrial Revolution was to wake up naturally in the middle of the night, cruise around, take a leak whatever, talk to your boy, dab it up, go back to bed till sun comes up. Because, mm. you know, you don't need to sleep that long. Go to bed when sun goes down, a little tired, rest. Wake up, it's cooler, get some shit done. That's why some people are night owls. Possibly. Just a little bit on these paintings. You know, I, I don't go crazy imagining vivid coloration here. You know, you got your black from your charcoal. You got shades of red, brown, yellow in certain places. Um, how do they do this? They use clays. They use dirt and other um, materials found in that area. Um, also, what's impressive about this cave system, especially what that preserved it so, so well, because those clays and stuff, they would rub away in time, you know, exposed to light, oxygen, eat away at it, erode. Um, this cave happened to have a cave in and then on top of it there was a heavy clay um, layer in the soil even above where the rocks are so water didn't drop down and, f and cause further or greater or 
uh, more rapid erosion to the rock and therefore the petroglyphs that exists on these caves. So this is what, like I mentioned earlier, a Goldilocks, which is a sick word to say, Goldilocks condition of preservation. Also located in a cool area. That always helps too. Um, so as soon as this place was discovered, weeks later in 1940, it's being explored. Schmoles, aka tourists, are allowed in up until around 1983 when finally experts go, you know what, dude? Everyone's mouth breathing in here. We're detecting, you know, different shrooms, which is pretty chill. What up, J-Tree? Other bacteria. It's eroding this, like, perfectly preserved thing. Yes, it's amazing. People can come and see this. But we got to shut it down. We got to study this shit. So we're going to build a replica. We're gonna just going to build a replica of what it is. People can go walk through that. It's basically the same thing. It's not exactly real. But you can kind of get that experience. Um, just to preserve this art in the caves. Because art is important, dude. And I'm going to get into why it's important. Art could be a powerful weapon, dude. Okay? We'll tease you right now with that. How's that? Um, it's tough to date how old this is. It's, it's, you know, it's funny. People say anywhere between 14 and 40,000 years. Massive. Think about the difference in life from the year zero when Jesus was friggin' born, dude, to right now. So that's only 2,000 years. A huge amount of time here. In human terms, in you know astronomical terms, just a little glip. A little, I don't even know if that's a real word. I just invented the word glip. What up? Pretty sick. Blip is what I meant to say. Um, glip is how you mess up saying the word blip. How would they do this thing? You know, it'd be mainly they'd use hands. They'd use their hands. Dudes would also use their butts. But then also, it was like ancient tagging, dude, where you would. You'd put some clay in a little, um, like almost like a, like a flute or a straw, and you would blow, and and use your mouth, and like trace fine lines by blowing stuff on there. How they figured that out? Incredible. Incredible. Discovered tools. Um. Now, this is in France. Cave painting is popular in Europe. It does exist elsewhere, but the best and uh, um, oldest examples do exist in Europe, many of them in France, some in Spain. Um, but it exists on other continents, the Mayas in Mexico, and their cenotes, their natural um, water springs under the, under the forest. There's cave paintings in there and other caves as well, in and around that area on the Yucatan Peninsula and, and so forth. Um, Australia, um, you've got it in a, something co called the Kunalata Cave, which sounds like a fun drink to order. Asia, um, Indonesia, so basically everywhere, but predominantly, and there's some in Lebanon too, predominantly Europe. So it's our ancient ancestors posting up painting, dude, putting down their thoughts. That's what's impressive about it, is we have a species there's another species um, that's not Homo sapien. We're talking about Homo sapiens here. That's us, same DNA. Um, we're talking. There's another species um, in this, you know, evolutionary theory, and we're always looking for the missing link, of course. And I forget what the species is, but they would bury their dead in in, in um, ritualistic ways in cave systems. And it hasn't been like proven yet, and this is like a documentary that I recent, recently saw on it. But it's like we, there's elephant graveyards, which is an example of other people, excuse me, I said people, other animals in nature doing sort of what people do of like is, it, it is reverence for the dead. And it could be them missing you, but and animals do express love. Like if you've ever been a pet owner, you know that. They don't just like you for their treats. They like you for the treats. Don't get me wrong, but it's not just that. Um, but elephants have graveyards. They, there's some sort of reverence going on. And, and we, as humans, extrapolate that to say, hey, does that mean that these animals also believe in God? 
then will super Christians dudes go, dude, see, even animals believe in God. But we don't know that for a fact. But it's interesting. Dude, it's fucking interesting. It's something that you could go to J Tree and talk about with one of your boys in a hot tub at an Airbnb. And then your neighbor would call you and say, keep it down. Then you'd ignore that. Then the Airbnb owner would call you and say, hey, we're getting complaints from the neighbor. And then you would say, that neighbor doesn't know what the fuck they're talking about. And then you probably get fined. But that's fine because you might find something out about the universe. What's interesting is oh, so much of this is theoretical. Look at this time that we're dealing with here, 14,000, 40,000 years. We never saw who painted this stuff. We, we see skeletal remnants, um, archaeologists, um, geologists, you know, they carbon date shit. I'm going to get into another um, radioactive style of, of dating, you, you, you dating, a.k.a. uranium dating. It's apparently more accurate uh, when it comes to cave um, timelines. But it's all, th it's, it's theoretical. And of course there's basis and of course there's, there are juxtaposing evidence found here and here and here and they're drawing conclusions is not just willy nilly. There's a scientific method here, which we have to trust and, and, have, and have faith in. But there's other experts that are using the same scientific method that are claiming that, hey, maybe these were Neanderthals. Other experts might say, no, 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 Neanderthals they didn't have the brain capacity for that. No, 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 no chance. And also, when, when we found these things, we carbon dated it, the Neanderthals were already wiped out well before that, so it has to be humans. But then there's other evidence at different cave systems in France that humans and Neanderthals are overlapping, sometimes overlapping thousands of years apart. They'll find like a human, an ancient human homo sapien like jawbone, mash the DNA, or oh, that's human, from this, you know, whatever, 30,000 years ago, then maybe probably... 40,000 years ago and then 30,000 years ago they'll find a Neanderthal bone in the same spot meaning hey maybe climate was shifting in that area Neanderthal groups were coming and going human groups were coming and going oftentimes they would feud and fight um, some you know sometimes maybe they had bone you know that there is Neanderthal DNA in human DNA dude my mom did a straight up 23 and me she was in the 98th percentile for Neanderthal DNA within humans. My mom's a beast, dude. See what I'm saying, dude? My mom's got high T. Dude, she can deadlift 400 pounds. I got a lot of siblings, four of them. She used to carry all five of us at a time with one hand. Other hand, freaking driving carpool. Absolute beast. So there's theories that this might not be, this cave system might not be human. Now, the art in here is the more elaborate, I have to say, in these Lesson caves, the art's more elaborate, most likely um, ancient Homo sapiens. But there are other cave systems in France. Um, let me get you some names from here, dude. So there's one in particular in Spain. Um, but they use a, these experts use a different... Um, carbon dating system um, they use u-series dating uranium instead of carbon u-series dating and i'm quoting here takes advantage of the fact of the calcite the form of calcium carbonate in st uh, stalactites and stalagmites it contains trace amounts of radioactive uranium um, minus 238 which decays to form atomic elements including radioactive thorium minus 230 by measuring the ratio of thorium-230 to uranium-238, daters, um, daters can estimate how long ago the calcite was laid down. And then they would match up that layer of stone with where the art is. Duh. If you didn't follow that, I mean, you got no hope. Kidding. Um, but also there's theories that say, hey, this piece of charcoal that was found right next to where the art is, is has been carbon dated. Of course, charcoal, carbon, you know, diamonds, all that type of shit. Um, it's just really hard pressed charcoal. And they will date that and they'll go, oh, this charcoal is used from this time. But you put on your detective hat, it could be a piece of car charcoal from way before. It doesn't mean 
that a human or a Neanderthal, ancient human or Neanderthal, came along later and used that older piece of charcoal to create art at a certain date. So you have to date the charcoal, you have to date where the art is, you got to do a lot of cross-referencing to find out and theorize. So there is a window open that goes to say, could it have been Neanderthals? Not in the Lasson cave systems, but at other cave systems. Most cave systems, and, and as I say cave systems, but art within cave systems is from humans. Ancient humans, dude. Freaking homo sapiens. What up? Posting up bipedals, cruising, chilling, creating art, dude. You know, tracing their weenies. Common themes, a lot of nature, a lot of animals, and human genitalia right there up with it. So pretty chill. And you know what? We still find a lot of that in our art today. Honestly, we'd probably go more roundabout to get to these more primal themes. You know, we love killing and fucking as a species. We love it. We live for it. We die for it. Did the humans and Neanderthals have beef, dude? I think so. You know, they survived off the same stuff we did. Competition for resource, resources. It's going to be you or me. Tell you what, ain't going to be me. And I think, you know, and you, I was looking at these experts. It wasn't like one huge battle happened. Although, you know, we might want to create a video game, a LARPing style game. Like, you know, a, Age of... Um, Con what was that? Like that Red Alert style game back in the day? Age of Empires? Where you would like create an empire and conquer. Pretty sick, fun game. I used to watch my boy Joey play that game. Dude, I used to love watching my boy Joey play that game at a sleepover, just chilling, dude, eating an ice cream sandwich. Oh, okay. my boy. See, I'm so old. I thought you meant at an arcade. I was like, oh. Oh, yeah. No, I'm talking about PC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Sims? Sim City? Sim style. Sim City? Everyone would used to build a Sim roller coaster that had no ending and would send the, that, that uh, didn't complete the loop and would send people to their deaths. Sure. It was interesting that the creators of that game allowed that to happen. Yep. But wouldn't let us see them nude. Yeah, kind of got kind of robbed us. Yeah. I'm sure, there's a few websites you can find these days if you're really itching, and you got to scratch that itch. As far as the uh, extinction of the Neanderthals, it wasn't one singular event. Um, also, there were groups spread out all over Europe, and and um, also you know humans. They say came to Europe and you know forty thousand years ago from Africa. This is using our mitochondrial Eve, where you know basically every female on Earth shares mitochondrial DNA cell work with this one ancient hominid in Africa, and you know we spread out from there. But uh, they say around forty thousand years ago, humans were walking bipedal walked over to um, Europe. Neanderthals were there before that, so there is overlap. There were probably some battles. Then there was crossbreeding, whether it be, I like to think in my mind, people fell in love. Maybe a human took an Neanderthal lady back to a cave and said, hey, this is cool. Look at that. I fucking made this deer, dude. You see this? In the, see the horns on that thing? Pretty accurate, pretty chill, dude. Also, that's my genitalia that I traced. Pretty small, but don't worry. That's fine. I'm a good guy. I want to take care of you. Also, there was probably more primal things like, hey, we just murdered all the dudes. We're going to take your ladies now. That stuff definitely went down. Neanderthal wise and human wise vice versa right um, there were battles but they say um, what most likely happened um, was the humans ability to organize it was our brains our higher capacity to interact to create plans even though the Neanderthal might have been stronger and like in a one-on-one -on -one battle, like in a ring or whatever, MMA style, the Neanderthal would probably gank the human. Average Neanderthal, average ancient human. The Neanderthal would gank that human. Later, probably rip, rip him from limb to limb. Um, but with teamwork is dream work. Teamwork is evolution work. That's how you know ancient humans wiped out megafauna, megaflora. Sadly, in some cases, but also necessary for survival and then also our biggest competitor they were uh, ancient humans with daniel plain views we will drink up your we will take your our cave system we'll take a straw we'll go all the way down and i will drink up your milkshake drink it up that's what we did dude 
organized. Our brain's capacity to communicate, organize, and cr and create strategic attacks against the Neanderthals where they're running around going, what the fuck, dude? I want to fight you, but it's three on one. We're coming from above. We're using strategy. We're using hostage drop-off strategy in ancient contexts, dude. And it was too powerful. It was also this brain power that gave us the ability to produce art. So in essence, art can be a weapon. Original thought, idea, is the ultimate weapon, which is why art must be protected, which is why art must be preserved, and it's why my art must evolve. So, very fucking sick to think about, dude. Very sick. And crazy to think about there was prolonged contact, probably 10,000 year period of humans in, in you know, with those interacting. So, um, fighting and, and trying to coexist right so or an orphan gets picked up and brought in maybe lovingly you never know you know neither or human both pretty similar dude. Oh, come on dude we'll chill you got little fingers you can freaking build stuff for us dude build this hut dude go you, dude you got art you got the eye go make art for us dude neanderthals might have been posting up commissioning art dude maybe they were just smoking ancient stogies posting up dude fucking blah, 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 talking like that blah, 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 blah. How, how we all know Neanderthals talk like this. They probably didn't even talk. They probably just did, did looks. Fucking dude, better go do that art, dude. And then humans talk. That's how all ancient humans talk. Annoying style, dude. Planning, scheming, dude. Humans are schemers, dude. Schemed our way to the top of the food chain, dude. Where will we scheme our way next? We'll find out. Maybe there's hints in these cave systems. I think that's why we're so stoked on them. That's why I get so stoked on them. So I'm fired up. I'd love to go check it out. Kind of a bummer. You got to check the replica, but still pretty sick. Still pretty sick. I'm fired up on it, dude. The Lasson cave system. I'm not sure if this is the necessarily the cave of dreams. Um, the system. one that Werner Herzog went to? Yeah. I looked that up. It's different. Yeah, different. They're uh, Chauvet, I think. Cave of Dreams also very amazing, amazing. Ancient, ancient hominids just dreaming, posting up, thinking, and then putting it down there for us to last and affect future generations. So it's incredible thought. It's impressive. It's impressive. Um, in any case, that gets me stoked. I'm pretty laid back. I hope you guys had a sick ass listen on that. Um, Trying to think if there's anything else I missed. Pretty much covered everything. Dude, you want to hear more about uranium-238 and, and calcitite-240? Nope. Um, so, pretty tight, dude. Pretty tight. I mean, I would say going forward, rocks last a long time. Wood disintegrates, can burn. Um, ancient obelisks, Egypt, the Sphinx, the pyramids. These things last. These are big. But what can you do... I would say, you know, I used to make fun of dudes who would graffiti nature. Like, I go on this hike with my wife in L.A. I remember the Angeles National Forest. You get out there, dudes are spray painting it, dude. What are you doing spray painting nature? Maybe they think they're acting like, you know, ancient our ancient ancestors. I'd say take some natural elements. Get yourself some charcoal. Maybe make it in the way. Talk to an old dude. You know, talk to an old dude at a car wash. It's where you meet old dudes. Ask him, hey, man, you know, how did ancient people create paint? Every old dude knows that. If he has Velcro shoes, he does. Or Birkenstocks with socks. And he'll know. Then you go, you gather these materials, you put that, you find a cave, you go you go hike down into a cave. Be careful. Tell someone where you're at. Jim Carrey, if I'm not back in five minutes, just wait longer. Tell him that. Go down there and trace your weenie. And then you will live forever. That's how you live forever, dude. Crack the code right there. Fountain of youth. You didn't think we were going to get there on today's episode, did you? We did. Just taught you how to live forever. It's original thought. And though tracing your your weenie is something someone else has done before, they've only done it to their own weenie. No one's ever traced your weenie. Be cool if you found a chick to do it for you. That'd be tight. Yeah. Be pretty sick. Don't know if I can convince the wife, though. Hey, babe, skip brunch. Want to go do something ancient. 
like a truffle pig, except uh, it's, yeah. it's a cave, your cave chick. Yeah, and my Lini's small, but it's quick. It's quick. It's not like it's going to be a huge project. Joe Marisi, this ain't going to be a huge project. And then we'll get brunch after. Just make sure we wash our hands. So we're splitting a burrito. Breakfast <laughs> burrito. All right, dude, I'm fired up. I hope you guys are stoked. Fired up to get another ep out. Um, we're growing. We're learning. We're staying stoked. We're staying focused. Summer, it's hot. Dog days right now. We're getting through it. Fall's almost here. Uh, if you need fanny, fantasy advice, hit me up, dude. Check the links for your raw dog captain tees. I'm still slinging those pups. Um, might be hitting the road with Chad and JT coming up on a few dates, which is sick. So check those links, dude. Um, click them, check them, scope them, stay in the know, stay safe, create art, uh, never change, just grow. All right, late. Thanks, Aaron.